Greetings everybody. In this Excel macros beast mode video, I'll show you how to build and run complex Excel macros with this one hidden trick. And the best part is no programming needed. But first, I must share with you how to start learning macros. There are three ways to develop a macros. One, record macro. Two, searching Google for the codes. And three, writing the codes. Recording macros and searching Google for the codes are two most popular tricks if you are not a programmer. Amongst these two, searching Google for the ready-made codes is the most powerful, but only if you know the right technique. Before I show you how that technique works, I must show you how does a macro look like. Macro is nothing but a VBA code. VBA stands for Visual Basic for Application. Just like a software program or a flowchart, it has a start, and an end. The starting words could be sub or it could be function. The end of both these will be denoted by end sub and end function respectively. Henceforth, I'll refer the start as head and the end as tail of the macro. The part of the code which actually does the task lies in between the head and the tail. An example of the head and tail of a macro would look like this. Now that you know how a macro's code look like, I'll show you the hidden trick which I've tested successfully hundreds of times. The hidden trick is the three magic words, VBA code 2. If you're searching for ready-made VBA codes on Google, that is macros, you should start your search with these three magic words. It should be followed by the task you wish to achieve. Example, split table by columns, convert numbers in words rupees, combine multiple workbooks, and many such tasks. So now let's see how it works. Example number one. If you have multiple worksheets in your workbook and you want to create an automatic index of links to those worksheets, would you be doing manually? I recommend that you do not because I'll show you how our three magic words VBA code 2 will help you automate that. Go to google.com, start typing in VBA code and mention the tasks that you wish the code to achieve. So, VBA code to create index. And the minute you write some keyword, there are chances that Google will give you some excellent recommendations. You might want to pick them up. So I pick index of links to worksheets. Now I'll get several blogs and forum links, which might lead to the answer. So I pick the first one, which says create links to all sheets in a workbook. Looks like my task. I click there. I land on this wonderful blog where the author has already developed a simple code which will accomplish my task. So let me copy the codes. Remember from our previous learnings, the head of a macro starts with sub or function and it ends with n sub or n function. So I'm going to copy that. Now let me go to Excel. When I reach Excel, I go to the view window. I click on macros drop down. And there is something called view macro, which I will click upon. Okay. It seems to be empty. Let me add a dummy name called test. Automatically the button called create gets activated. I click on create and it takes me to the code window. Now this is a basic head and tail with no action in between. What I intend to do is to delete this and paste the code taken from the internet blog. Good. Let me close the window. Now, I place my cursor in one of the cells in the index worksheet and I go back to view macros, this time again to view macros and I see a macro which is called create links to all sheets. Let me run it. Cool. It happened in a second. Imagine if you have to do this task again and again, isn't this automation? Well, let me add the flavor of customization. I would want that whenever the macro is run, it should start from the cell C2, always. Okay, so I go to macro, I click on record macro, let the name be test2, no spaces in the name, and I press OK. I purposely choose cell D2, I go back to macros, and stop the recording. What has happened in the last few seconds is, macros recorder has transformed my actions into codes. Let me see where the code is. I go to view macro, I go to test two, and I click on edit. Now this is the second macro which I recently recorded. 
and there is a line which says range d2 dot select let me copy that line place my cursor at the end of the dim statement enter 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 multiple times and paste it there now can i not change this cell reference to c2 so the code now says first you select the cell c2 and then run the macro in a loop which will create the index of links to worksheets let me delete this dummy macro i'll close the code window and i'll test this let me keep my cursor on f1 and i go to macro view macro and then i'll run the create links to all sheet let's see what happens run Superb! It went to C2 and then ran the macro. Do you remember, a macro once run cannot be undone, so Ctrl Z will not work. So my friends, we just saw the power of Google search along with the three magic words VBA Code 2 and with it, the ability to customize the code with the help of record macro. Next, example number two. If you ever had to convert a number in words and that to hundreds and hundreds of such numbers, are you thinking of doing that manually? I again would recommend you not. Let's see if our technique can help us. Go to google.com, start typing in VBA code to convert numbers to words. If you wish to add the currency name, it'll be great. In this case, I'm adding rupee. Now it took me a minute or two to go through some of these blogs and I ended up on the second block, which is called yogeshguptaonline.com. I click on it. The author seems to be have developed a small user defined function, which is based on macro for this purpose. As I scroll down, further down and further down, I see a set of code whose starting statement is function. And I'm sure at the last line, the term end function would definitely be there. Let me scroll further down. Yes, it is. So let me do one thing. Let me copy the entire block of this code. And I'll eventually paste this in Excel. I go to view, I go to macros, I go to view macro. As usual, it's going to be empty. So let me write test one and I click on create button. It takes me the code window. I delete the dummy macro and instead I paste the code taken from the internet. Paste it. Now this is slightly different from the previous macro because this is a function based macro. VLOOKUP is a system defined function. This one is a user defined function and the name of the function is spellcar. I'm going to close this window and type in equal to spell C U double R using the tab key. I auto complete and then I choose the number closing the parenthesis enter superb as I double click and get it down for the remaining. I get answers for all. Now, isn't this a great time saver trick? And this is what macros can do for you. Next, how to split the table, splitting a table by its column based on one columns value. I need multiple worksheets and that too fast. So what do I do? Well, go to google.com and start typing our three magic words, VBA code to split a table by column. Enter. You may have to spend few seconds in assessing the headings of each of these blogs. I try to click on the first one, which says how to split data into multiple worksheets based on column. I land on extendoffice.com where the author has beautifully illustrated the problem. In fact, he's also developed a code for you to use. The heading reminds me of the head of the macro and I'm sure as I move along downwards, I'll also get to see the tail of the macro. Plus, the author has made some specific comments on how to use this code. So I'll come to this once I copy the code. From head, Tail tail copied. Now the author says that there are three variables which might need change. One, it's the column number you have to mention. Second, you have to mention the sheet name and third, the titles range. So you'll see in the code where the changes needs to be made. Let me go to Excel. Once I'm in Excel, I'll go to view. Then I'll move to the macros button and click on view macro. As usual, it's going to be empty. So let me type in test one. Clicking enter will activate the create button. I see the two lines of dummy macro. I delete them and I paste the code taken from the internet. Now, the name of the sheet is sheet one. Is it matching with the code? Yes, this is what the author was trying to tell you. 
Second, in the fourth column lies the division based on which you want to split the column. So you must change V call equal to four. Next, the titles are starting from A2 and ends at F2. So you must change the code A2 till F2. Superb. After making these three changes, I close the window and I intend to run the macro. I click on macros button, go to view macros, choose the name of the macro and run it. In few seconds, you noticed several sheets got created and each of the sheet depends on the heading of the division name. Great. So that's the power of knowing the three magic words, VBA code 2. It's time for a quick wrap up of this Excel macros beast mode video. In this video, you learned how to build and run complex Excel macros. We learned many strategies, one of which was the three magic words, VBA code 2. And now you're ready to apply these examples. Apply these learning to your job and become faster, save time and bring efficiency.